What's up, Cal gang? All right, we got this physics problem here. So we got this 900 Newton athlete who's trying to float in a pool, but he's not floating. Uh, for him to be able to float, he needs a, a constant force upward to be applied to him. So let's kind of draw this. So we got a dude here, or a girl, or, you know, or anyone, really. It doesn't have to be a dude or a girl. So they're, they're sinking, whoever it is. Um, so they need a constant force to be held up. So that's 20 newtons. So let's draw a force body diagram of what's going on here. Sorry about the chair in the way. Okay, uh, this is not legal error, perfect. All right, so we got force of gravity, right? Always force of gravity. Then we have buoyant force. Buoyant force is the force that water applies upward on someone. That's why you float in water if you do, or if you don't float in water, that's why you kind of float. And then um, you have this constant force apply being applied, right? Now we have this, this system is at equilibrium, right? He's not moving, or, you know, they're not moving at all. And if it's at equilibrium, we know that the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to zero, right? If the sum of the forces were not equal to zero, they'd be accelerating upward, downward, it, you know. So we know that this is true, and those are all the forces acting. So basically what we can say is that zero is equal to the force of buoyancy plus the force applied, but minus the force of gravity. This is going to be a true statement. So we know these things, right? We know force of gravity because he said he's 900 newtons. Um, and we know that the upward force is 20 newtons. So we can just plug all this in. So zero is equal to the force of buoyancy plus 20 minus 900. So we're going to get, um, basically we're going to get 880 is equal to the force of buoyancy. Perfect. So we found the force of buoyancy. That's not what we're looking for. We're trying to find his volume and his density. So to find his volume and his density, we need to use the buoyancy formula. So the uh, buoyancy formula says the force of buoyancy is equal to the density of the liquid times gravity times the volume of the person or of the object. So what do we got here? So we have this. Uh, we have the density of the water. And we have gravity. So we're just trying to find his volume. So we can do that. So volume is equal to the force of buoyancy divided by density gravity. And if you plug in your numbers for that, which I'm going to do, you're gonna get 880, force of buoyancy, divided by density of the water, which is just 1,000, and then gravity, 9.81. And your number for that is going to be 0 0.0897 meters, that's a nine, cubed. All right. There you go, that's your answer to part A. Uh, it's a pretty small volume, I guess, but if you think about a meter cubed, I mean, that's like really big, right? Like we're pretty thin as humans, and like, so we're, of course we're not gonna take up a full meter. It might take up a 10th of a cubed meter, which makes sense actually to me. Um, all right, so then it wants us to find the density, right? This is kind of a funny problem, calculating someone's density. How dense are you? Let's figure it out though. So we know that uh, density is equal to mass over volume. We know the volume. Uh, we can find the mass by using the force formula. So we know that force of gravity is equal to mass times acceleration. Acceleration is gravity. They gave us the force of gravity, which is 900. So we take 900 divided by 9.81. You're gonna get its mass, which is about um, 91.7 kilograms. Okay, so then we can just plug these numbers in. So we know it's 91. 91.7 kilograms, and then divided by its volume, 0 0.0897, and you're gonna get 1,023 kilogram meter cubed, which makes sense, right? This just means that he's a little bit more dense than the water, which makes sense. Like, if he's a little bit more dense, he's gonna sink. If he's a little bit less dense, he's gonna float. So, and this number makes perfect sense to me. Um, I didn't really, I didn't circle this one. There's his volume, there's his density. Cool, cool problem. All right, so let's see you solve these kind of problems. Good luck on your physics homework, guys. See you next time.